brothers and sisters, I respectfully request us to stand as we open our Bibles in the book of the Gospel of John, chapter 10, and therein we shall read four verses. Uh, that is uh, 27 to 30. John chapter 10. Johanna Msasura Yakumi. Verse 27. Up to 30. And if you're there, read with your Bible. We can read. Bible says. My sheep hear my voice and I know them. And they follow me and I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. And that is our, the word of God for us this morning. The grass with us. Flower fades. But the word of our God stands forever. We can have our seats in his presence. Amen. Amen. This morning, by the grace of God, and for the next few moments that we have ahead of us, we are going to look at the word of God, and the Lord is going to speak to us on a topic, trusting a certain God in an uncertain times. Trusting a certain God in an uncertain times. And in other words, what we are saying is that you can take it all you can take it all and place it in his hands. You can trust his hands. And I believe as a body of believers and as individuals, when you look back, we must have faced a number of challenges. In the past one year, I believe as an individual and as a family you have had to wrestle a variety of trials a variety of temptations you must have gone a number of painful moments in your life I know this is a possibility that in the past one year someone in this congregation or someone you know may have lost their job. I know this one for a certain that some of us in the past one of our one year we have had to bury our loved ones. There have been moments of sicknesses there have been moments of diseases that have come into our lives and in our homes eh? and it looked like they become comfortable in our environs eh? and because of the trials and the tragedies of life eh? that we face on a daily basis they may have cut script in your mind the idea of wanting to give up the idea of wanting to throw in the towel and brothers and sisters the problem with our problems 
na shida zetu is that they are not seasonal. Ni kwamba si za kipindi. They do not just go away because we've changed the calendar on the wall. Sitawiki kwa sababu tumepindua kalenda. They do not just go away because we flip to the next page of the calendar. Sitawiki kwa sababu tumepindua ukurasa mwingine wa kalenda. Actually a man by the name of Job in the Bible. Na mtu jina lake Ayubu kwenye Biblia. He tells us in the book that bears his name. Anatuambia kwenye kitabu kilicho na jina lake. Chapter 14 verse 1. Sura 14 He does not encourage us. Yeye hatutii moyo kamwe. He says that a man that is born of a woman. Anasema mwanadamu aliyezaliwa na mwanamke is of but a few days. Siku zake za kuishi si nyingi. And as if those day as, as if that is not enough. Kwamba ikionekana hujatosha. He says they are brief. Anasema si nyingi. And they are full of trouble. Nazo zimejawa na tabu. Again when our Lord Jesus came a walking was walking on earth. Na Yesu Kristo alipokuwa anatembea duniani. In the book that we've read the John chapter 16 na kitabu ambacho tumesoma Yohana 16 he made a promise yeye aliweka ahadi and he said that in this world anasema katika hii dunia as long as we are in this body mradi tu tuko mwilini huu we will have trials we will have tribulations tutakuwa na majaribu na mateso there will be moments of failures tutakuwa kwenye nyakati za kushindwa there will be moments of frustrations tutakuwa kwenye nyakati za kufadhaika but my brethren lakini wapendwa be of good cheer mjitie moyo For I heard the Lord say that he has already overcome anything that this world is bringing our way or even the devil is plotting to give a bring our way yes there will be trouble there will be moments of pain in moments of frustration But I have heard the Lord saying that my children cheer up I have overcome the world and because I have overcome you will overcome I heard Paul say in Romans 8:31 that if God is for us who can dare be against us and brothers and sisters ndugu na dada the key to becoming an overcomer fungu kufanyika mshindi is taking it all ni kuchukua yote and placing it in his hands na kumpa mikononi mwake taking all your cares kuchukua shida zako zote taking all your burdens kuchukua mizigo yako yote taking all your frustrations kuchukua mifadhaiko yako yote taking all your pain kuchukua uchungu wako wote placing it in the hand of god Trusting a God who is certain. Mtumainie Mungu wa hakika. As we continue living in an uncertain times. Anapoendelea kuishi nyakati zisizo na uhakika. Our God is the only one that is certain. Mungu wetu tu ndiye pekee aliye wa hakika. If you place your trust in the world systems. Ukiweka ulimwengu mifumo ya kidunia. My brethren, you find yourself in a lot of pain. Ujipata ukiwa na shida nyingi. And in a lot of disappointment. Hata bishusha moyo vingi. If we can dare brethren. Ikiwa tuwaweza jaribu wapendwa. As individuals and as a congregation. Kama watu binafsi na kama kongamano. Please our trust and our faith in God. Tuweke tumaini letu kwenye Mungu. Go everything in our lives. Mungu vyote katika maisha yetu. God will make sure. Mungu atahakikisha that it will work out for your good. Kwamba itatenda wema kwa faida yako. God will work through the situation. Mungu atafanya kazi pia hicho kipindi. God will work through that issue. Ataweza kushukia hiyo shida. He will work through that pain. Atafanya kazi kupitia huu uchungu. He will work through that which you think is delay. Atafanya kazi kupitia hicho unachoona kinafanya. It shall be for your own good. Itakuwa ni kwa faida yako. This morning brethren. Asubuhi ya leo wapendwa. The Lord gave me the assignment. Bwana alinipa kazi ya ziada. Come and encourage you this morning. Nije niwatie moyo asubuhi ya leo. If you can place it in his hands. Kama ikuwa moyo za upatie mkono ni mwake. If you will dare trust him. Ikiwa tu mtajaribu kuku maini. It is going to work out for your own good. Itatenda kazi kwa faida yako. So the biggest question this morning. Yesu alikubwa asubuhi ya leo. Is are you ready? Ni kwamba je utayari? Are you prepared to place your trust in him? Umejiandaa kumpea tumaini lako. In the scripture that we 
have read and in the entire gospel of the book of, uh, of Jonah you realize that the apostle does not try to uh, does not give us the whole story about God and actually he tells us that if he dared telling us everything about our Lord then our world will not, will not be able to contain it that is in chapter 21 verse 25 in the passion translation he says Jesus did, uh, did countless things uh, that I have not included here and if every one of his works were written down and described and described one by one I suppose that the world itself will not have enough room to contain the books that would have been written and what John is saying here is that his assignment was not to prove God he just gave us what was enough enough examples to portray to us the power of God to display to us the ability of God so that when we see what God can do and we are convinced that he can do for us then we can place our trust in him he is writing to help us make up our mind whether or not we are going to trust in God and what gives me great joy this morning is that he included the portion that we have read this morning because this is one of the most assuring words powerful words of hope and these are the words that will let us know that we can be safe in his hands if we can only place our trust in him the apostle John in chapter 20 verse 31 he is trying to convince us to make us understand why he has written his gospel to us and he is telling you and he is telling me that the reason he wrote is that he may convince us we believe in Jesus Christ who is the son of God he wants to convince you and I that we can place our faith in him and when we do that we will receive eternal life we will live forever with him and in this chapter that we have read Jesus is attending a feast and at this particular moment he's walking around the Solomon uh, the, the, uh, through Solomon's porch and the people of that day they cornered him like news reporters do if you are a source of hot stories and you know brethren Jesus was the hottest news fan in town he was going around doing miracles it is said that he turned water into wine it was reported that he was healing the sicker it was reported that he was giving sight to the blind they reported that he was raising the dead he was also reported that he fed 5,000 men with two little fish and five pieces of bread and as if that was not hot enough 
the disciples reported that they saw him walking on a stormy sea. And this is what raised curiosity. And everybody wanted to go to where he was. Everybody wanted to see him. And there are many who wondered if indeed he was the Messiah. And so when they cornered him that particular time, they wanted him to say once and for all. And confirm to them whether he was the anointed one from God or they should wait for another one. And Jesus being Jesus, he did not engage them in an argument. He simply said to them in chapter 10 verse 25 that I already told you and you did not believe me the miracles I have performed they speak for themselves and now brothers and sisters before we get into a condemnation frenzy condemning these Jewish men I want us to keep it in our mind that it, has, it is not uncommon for us to find ourselves questioning the power of God questioning the informant of God in our affairs there are times that we have asked where are you God there are times we have thought that God you seem so far away a thousand miles from where I am but brothers and sisters it is important to understand that if at some point we have doubted we are in good company Thomas doubted and he was walking with the Lord every day John the Baptist doubted and he was the forerunner of the Messiah he said that he sent people to Jesus to ask him are you the one or shall we wait for another one in John chapter se, uh, in Luke chapter 7 verse 19 Jesus and uh, the Bible says uh, and John said a call to uh, his disciples uh, and sent them to Jesus saying are you the coming one or do we look for another and the response that Jesus gave John it is the same reply that he is giving to these Jewish men who surround him around the text that we have read he told the disciples of John go back and tell your teacher the blind see the lame walk the lepers are cleansed the deaf hear the dead are raised and to the poor they are hearing the gospel allow me to encourage you my brothers and sisters have you ever wondered why men and women sometimes doubt the power of the son of God sometimes doubt the ability of the living God I found the answer in John 10 26 and the, Jesus said it clearly that if you find yourself doubting and those who are doubting it might be possible they have not received their identity or been called the sheep of his fold you were not among his 
pasture. You see brothers and sisters. Over 13 times. Mara zaidi ya 13. Depending with the translation that you are reading. Our Lord uses the word, the word shepherd. In the in the 10th chapter of John. In the 10th chapter of John. Over 13 times. And there are other places in scripture. Where the Bible says. That there is the existence of false sheep. Kwamba kuna kuwezekano kuweko na kondoo wabaya. An example is in Matthew chapter 7. Mfano ni katika Matthew sura ya 7. Verse 15. Sano kumina tano. Where the Bible says. Ambapo bibili nasema. Beware of false prophets. Ni haveli na manabi wa wongo. Who come to you in sheep's clothing. Ana kujia majivalisha ngozi ya kondoo. But inwardly. Lakini mlenani. They are greedy wolves. Wao ni mbwa mwiti. As of friends. Na kwa hiyo. I want to encourage us this morning if we are going to experience the power of God if God is going to be indeed our helper in these uncertain times that we are living make sure you are sheep legit you are sheep legit because there are others that are wearing the cover of a sheep but inwardly they are, some, they are something else and so here in this scripture that we've read Jesus is calling every true believer that you are a sheep of his pasture and he says that if indeed you are his sheep you hear his voice and he's telling us that those who know him uh, uh, that, that those who've known him from the foundation of the earth are the ones who follow in his footsteps. They are the ones who place their trust and faith in him and they hope in his, in his power. And he says that those ones are who are the sheep of his pasture no matter what may come their way they will always look to the Lord and in him they will find comfort and care Job the Petiak Job he was a, he was a sheep of his uh, pasture he said in chapter 13 verse 15 for he slay me I will trust him Abraham followed the Lord because he was a sheep of his pasture even at the moment where he didn't know where the Lord was taking him so the question we need to ask ourselves how does it stand between us and God will we place our trust in him will we place our faith in him you see brothers and sisters we have a lot of people who are going around and they are talking about being sheep of his pasture they claim to be sheep but they are living like dogs. They are living like pigs. And the Bible says that a dog will still do that thing. It will still go back to its vomit. And no matter how you wash a pig, it will still go back to the pig pen. A man that doesn't know the Lord they eventually go back to their old ways but as I came with words of encouragement that if indeed you are a sheep
ship of his pastor. You can have this confidence in God. That he is your good shepherd. And if he is your good shepherd. You must be ready. You must be willing. You must be committed. To hear his voice. And then you pray for the spirit of discernment. To differentiate. To differentiate. The different voices that are going around in our world. You must pray for the spirit of discernment so that you may understand the voice of your good shepherd. And when you hear him talk to you, when you hear him give you instructions, you must be ready and willing. To do whatever he instructs you to do. Sense of God, my friends. All of our security. Our safety. Our salvation. Is wrapped up in one man. And his name is Jesus. It doesn't matter how strong your daddy may be. It doesn't matter how loving your mother may be. It doesn't matter how close you are with your best friend. You will never find any like Jesus. You will never have any that can compare with Jesus. As the sheep of our God, our security is assured. Our safety is assured. And our salvation is assured. Jesus says, Already, tayari, I've given you eternal life. And that is a free gift from God. The Bible says that God loved us so, so much. And as a result, He gave His only begotten Son. So that if you will believe in Him, eternal life becomes yours. And brethren, there is no other better security I know than knowing that after this life, I will live with my God. After this life, I will see Him in paradise. Brothers and sisters, the source of our security it is not by our works. Our eternal life it is not a eternal life. It is not as a result of our good works. But we receive this security simply because you placed our faith in Jesus. And you placed our hope it is securing power. You see brothers and sisters the security of the sheep is founded on it rests on the ability of the shepherd. The security of the sheep is founded on the ability of the shepherd. It is only the shepherd that can defend the sheep. It is only the shepherd that can preserve the sheep. It is only the shepherd that can lead the sheep. It does not depend on the ability of friendship, failing sheep, 
security Usalama. salvation Wokovu. assurance Na is in the hands of the shepherd it is solely rest Na ina, ina in the mighty hand of God uwez, mkono, uwez who wamu. can deliver his sheep from all trials from all temptations from all pain and of our brothers and sisters if we can dare just place our faith in him he will work everything for your own good you know Jesus promised brethren that because he is a good shepherd he is ready to lay down his life for the sake of his shepherd he is ready to die so that you can live he is ready to embrace poverty so that you can become richer he is ready to embrace pain so that he can take your pain away and so brothers and sisters our safety our security our salvation is in the hands of our God and so brothers and sisters I came to remind you stop relying on your strength stop relying on your ability stop relying on what you can and bless all your trust in his hands you can trust him you can hope in him because it is only his hands where there is security brothers and sisters it is my prayer that we can imitate the faith of a little shepherd boy whose story we read in 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 37 his name is David and he says the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear who deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. You know, David was, to was talking concerning his upcoming battle between him and Goliath. And he went on to say the battle isn't mine. The battle belongs to the Lord. It isn't by might, my brothers and sisters. It is not by power. But it is by his power. It is he alone who knows how to truly deliver. It is he alone who knows how truly to heal. It is him alone who can make you secure. And the principle that David is bringing out here is that you can place it in his hands. He was so certain of the ability of God. He was so sure on what God can do for him. My brothers and sisters, could it be possible that in the entire year you've been trying to fight your own battles and you haven't gone farther from where you began. You your children are still disobedient. Your wife or husband is still being troublesome. Guys at work, they're still getting in your nerve. All your new year resolutions are. They all went down the drain. Could it be because you tried fighting your own battles? Could it be it is because 
Because you trust him in your hands. I came with an encouragement to you this morning. That no matter what giants come your way. No matter what you may be facing right now. Put all your trust in his hand. If your children are out of control. Put them in the hands of God. If your wife or husband is threatening to walk away, put that marriage in the hands of God. If your boss has already told you that they no longer need your services, all that blessed in his heart. Whatever it may be, it may be addiction, it may be diseases, sicknesses, some kind of distress. My brothers and sisters, I came to encourage you that you can put it all in the mighty hand of God. Because it is only him who knows how to save to the uttermost. And for those who are fearful today, I heard the Lord say to you, to that fearful soul, fear not. I am with you. Be not dismayed. I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I heard the Lord say, Let the weakling say, I am strong. I heard the Lord say, Strengthen the weak hands. Make from the Fibonisa. Those who are fearful hearted. Be strong and do not fear. Behold, your God is coming. Your God will come. And is coming to save you. My brothers and sisters. I will not die reminding you. You ought to trust in him today. We're back at the beginning of this year. You may have been facing troubles. And when you rose up this morning, some problems were looking at you. Why is it so? Is it possible that you trusted in your ability? Is it possible you trusted in your power? This morning, brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you abandon any other foundation and stand on the foundation Jesus Christ is the only sure foundation is the only one that is sure is the only one that is certain allow me to talk about three things and then three things and then we call it a rap. One thing that you must do if you bless it uh, to help you place it in his hands, you must choose to believe. Lazima uchague kuamini. Believe. Amini. Accept it in your mind. Kubali mawazoni. Convince yourself. Ujishawishi mwenyewe. God is true. His word is true. Even without any formal kind of a proof. Accept it within yourself. That God can never lie. Convince yourself. That you will trust in him. You will have a complete. 
mapele and total confidence na ujasiri kamili total obedience utifu kikamilifu to the word of god kwa neno la mungu the lord said bwana akasema if you cast all your cares on him ikiwa utapatiana shida zako zote kwake he will exalt you atakuinua he will lift up I will lift you up atakuinua juu in due time wakati ufao do you believe that Unaamini hayo. The Lord promised. Bwana kaahidi that if you place your faith in his son Jesus. Kwamba ukiweka imani yako ndani ya mwanae Yesu Kristo, you will have eternal life. Utapata uzima wa milele. Do you believe that? Unaamini hilo. The Lord promised. Bwana kaahidi that he will not put more on you. Kwamba hataweka zaidi ndani yako that you can bear. Kuliko ambayo haunayoweza. Do you believe that? Unaamini hayo. The Lord said. Bwana kasema that it is him. Kwamba ni yeye. Who teaches you how to do business. Akufunza kufanya biashara and make profit. Na kufanya faida. Do you believe him? Unaamini? God says Mungu anasema that he loves you deeply. Kwa maana anakupenda zaidi no matter what. Haijalishi mambo yako vipi. Do you believe that? Unaamini? God says Mungu anasema that he will give you power for your life. Kwa maana atakupa nguvu kwa maisha yako. Do you believe that? Unaamini hayo? God said Mungu akasema that his presence kwa maana uwepo wake brings joy in your life. Na leta furaha maisha ni mwako. Do you believe that? Unaamini hilo? God says Mungu anasema that he will fill you kwa maana atakujaza with an overflowing hope. Na tumaini linalofurika. Do you believe that? Unaamini hivyo? God said Mungu akasema that you strengthen and help you kama atakutia nguvu na kukusaidia do you believe that unaamini hivyo god said mungu akasema he give you wisdom atakupa hekima do you believe that unaamini hiyo god said mungu akasema you are a heir of abundant life wewe ni mrithi wa maisha teletele do you believe that unaamini god said mungu akasema he has a good plan with your life na mpango mwema wa maisha yako do you believe that unaamini hayo god said mungu akasema that he'll give you peace atakupa amani do you believe that unaamini hilo god said mungu akasema that is working everything and all things kama nafanya vyote na kila kitu for your own good kwa faida yako do you believe that unaamini you see brothers and sisters naona ndugu na dada all the promises of god hadi zote zake mungu are yes zipo ndio and amen na niamina Some of our problems brothers and sisters. Baadhi ya shida zetu ndugu na dada that we are facing today. Tunazo kumana nazo hii leo and we fail to admit. Na tunakosa kuamini is because is because we fail to believe in what God said he will do for us. Kwa sababu tunakosa kuamini alichosema Mungu atatutendea. We fail to do that which he told us only to do. Tunakosa kutenda alichotuambia tutende. I had the other day. Nilisikia siku nyingine. The writer of the book of Hebrews. Mwandishi wa kitabu cha Waebrania. He said in the 10th chapter of Hebrews. Akasema katika sura ya 10 ya kitabu cha Waebrania that he is faithful that promise. Kwamba yeye ni mwa aminifu kuweka hiyo ahadi he that promised yeye aliyahidi he is faithful ni muaminifu and i am going to place all my trust in him na nitaweka tumaini langu lote kwenye mikono yake with you utakuwa hivi the second thing you must do na pili ambalo lazima ulifanye you must hear his voice lazima uisikie sauti yake hear his voice isikie sauti yake believe amini then hear his voice if you hear his sound you do not only have to believe hautaamini tu but you must also have to hear his voice bali pia lazima uisikie sauti yake and our god speaks to us in many ways na mungu wetu hutunenea kwa njia nyingi he speaks to us through logos unena nasi kupitia neno lililoandikwa and through rema na hata kupitia neno lililonenwa i have a word for you my friends young people ninalo neno kwako ewe kijana you are not going to hear the voice of god hautaisikia sauti ya mungu over the noise of social media juu ya masauti ya mitandao ya kijamii my mothers and my sisters akina mama na dada zangu you are not going to hear your, the voice of god hautaisikia sauti ya mungu if all your evening ikiwa jioni yako yote you are going to spend it watching z world wewe itakuwa tu unatazama z world brothers 
ndugu you're not going to hear the voice of god utaisikia sauti ya mungu with a cell phone on your ear kiwa kila wakati simu yako kwenye masikio and you have the voice of your wife on the other hand na sauti ya mkeo upande mwingine you are not going to hear the voice of god utaisikia sauti ya mungu if all you are doing ikiwa yote unayotenda is looking for network ni kutaz ni kutafuta tafuta kuliko na network struggling whether the person on the other end and is hearing you. Yaribu kungangana kuwa kama mwingine upande ule anakusikia. You are going to hear the voice of God. Hiyo utasikia sauti ya Mungu. We need to take a lesson from the prophet Elijah. Napaswa kujifunza na nabii Eliya. In 1 Kings chapter 19 verse 11 to 13. Katika wafalme wa kwanza 19 mlo 11. The Lord told Elijah. Anakamwambia Eliya, Go stand on a mountain. Nenda simama mlimani. And you will hear my voice. Utaisikia sauti yangu. First there was a strong wind. God was not in the wind. There came an earthquake. God was not in the earthquake. There came fire. God was not in the fire. Finally a small still voice. And that is where God was. Brothers and sisters. If we are going to hear from God kutoka kwa Mungu we must deliberately lazima kwa kujitakia and oftenly na hata kila wakati create time for god tutenge muda na mwenyewe we must have a time lazima tuwe na wakati and a place na mahali where we spend our time with god ambapo tunakuwa na kati mwema na Mungu wetu i want to encourage you brothers and sisters create your time with jesus tenga wakati uwe na yesu like you make time for coffee wakati vile tu unatenga wakati kwa kahawa with kapu. your friend na rafiki yako you create time for lunch with your friend unakuwa na wakati mwema wa makuli ya huyu my brothers and sisters tafadhali ndugu na dada let us create time with jesus tuwe na wakati na yesu i think it is that in the 13 days to go to the next year 13 tu tuingie mwaka ujao we interrogate interrogate ourselves tujichunguze wenyewe in the past years of this and the past days of this siku zilizopita za mwaka huu how many days can we account ni siku ngapi ambazo tunaweza kusema we spent with jesus kwamba tulitenga wakati na kuwa na yesu in prayers and in fasting kwenye maombi pia kufunga our time of devotion wakati wa maombi telling jesus here i am kwamba yesu nipo hapa i believe i'm a sheep of your pasture na mimi ni kondoo wa malisho yako i believe that you speak na mimi wewe hunena speak to me now in the last one year mwaka mmoja umekwisha how many hours ni masaa ngapi you give to jesus ulimpatia yesu in prayer katika maombi in study of his word ulisoma neno lake listening from him hata kusikia kutoka kwake it is not enough to hear from jesus yatosha tu kusikia kutoka kwa yesu you must also commit ali lazima ujitoe that whatever he instructs kama yoyote anayokushauri you will do utatenda whatever he rebukes yote anayokukemea you will avoid lazima ukae mbali nayo whatever correction he points in your life rekebisho yote anayokuonyesha mwishoni to correct lazima urekebishe you know when you sit down with jesus you na poketi na yesu you will hear him tell you utasikia akikwambia that you need to love god kwamba haukumpenda mungu juu you need to love your god kwa sababu kumpenda mungu wako with all your might kwa mawazo kumwezo wako stranger hata nguvu zako zote your mind na mawazo yako yote god tell you mtasikia mungu akikwambia you need to live well with your spouse hasa kuishi vizuri na mwenzio wa ndoa live well with your children ishi vizuri na wana live well with your neighbors ishi vizuri na jirani zako when you listen to god usikizapo mungu you will hear him tell you mtamsikia akikwambia you need to live the golden rule hasa kuishi kupitia ile kanuni loving your friend Loving your neighbor. Jipenda jirani zako. Like you love yourself. Jinsi ujipenda hapo. When you sit down with Jesus. Kipo chini na Yesu. You hear him tell you. Utamsikia akikwambia. You need to commit your life to prayer. Au unapaswa utoe maisha yako kwa maombi. Pray without ceasing. Au unapaswa na kukoma. Communicate sincerely with God. Ongea kwa 
uwazi na Mungu when you sit down with Jesus he will tell you atakuambia that you need to freely forgive when you sit down with Jesus you will hear him tell you don't forsake the gathering of brethren when you sit down with Jesus you hear him tell you that you need to be a generous giver you know and sisters a day is coming that the Lord will ask you to account for your time account for your talent account for your resources account for your opportunities how will you measure up brothers and sisters the third thing that you need to do you must follow the example of Christ I know we love to sing where he leads me I will follow mimi nitamfuata when he calls me anitapo i will answer nitajibu but the question we need to ask ourselves brothers and sisters ni swali tunapaswa kujiuliza ndugu na dada what about when things are not going our way na je wakati mambo hayakwendi tunavyotarajia will we still follow him bado utamfuata what about na je when it looks that it's the wicked that are prospering na wakati tu inaonekana waovu ndio wanaofanikiwa and seems like we are lacking na sisi tuliokoka tunaonekana kama kwamba tunaanguka tu will we still follow him bado tutamfuata will you follow the lord my brother and sister tutamfuata bwana ndugu na dada yangu even at the point where you receive the news that your mother has been called home hata wakati utapokea habari kwamba mama yako amepumzika Will you still follow the Lord? When the doctor tells you, sorry, there is nothing else we can do. Will you still follow Jesus? Mother, if your baby girl isn't coming home. Today without flinching my eyes and with conviction from the Holy Spirit. I came to assure you that no matter what security is found in following the lord you know the psalm is said that because he is my shepherd i will follow him and because i follow him i will have more than enough because i follow him he will make me lie down in green pastures because i follow him he will lead me beside still waters because i follow him he will restore my soul because i follow him he shall lead me in his paths of righteousness and because i follow him even when i find myself in the valleys of death I will fear no evil because I follow him he is always with me because I follow him even in the midst of my enemies he shall prepare a table for me because I follow him he shall anoint my head with oil and my cup will always overflow because i follow him the storms of life may be raging around me but somehow lakini kwa hata hayo some way he will keep on keeping me and because i trust him i don't have to want for anything because i follow him Uh, he will make me his righteous and because i follow him uh, he has made me his seed and i will never beg for bread you see brothers and sisters our god is a keeper 
ni mpunzi our god mungu wetu is a keeper ni mpunzi he has said that he will never disappoint anyone hata waishusha mwa hata moja you can put it in his hands unaweza tegemea mikono yake when it comes to safety ifikia hapo usalama what could possibly be safer ambacho ambachowezekana kuwa salama than the hands of god kuliko mikono ya mungu what can be probably safer ambacho ni nini kitaweza kuwa salama than the hand of god kuliko mkono wa mungu daniel trusted in those hands yeye alitumainia hiyo mikono and when he was in the den full of lions alikuwa kwenye tundu lo jawa na simba the man of god found safety mshua mungu akapata salama the three hebrews boys wale vijana watatu wa kiebrania trusted in the safety of those hands alitumainia mikono ya mungu and even in the midst of fire hata katikati ya moto they found safety walipata salama my mother's mother na mama ya Moses's mother mama ya Moses ya Musa i trusted in those hands alitumainia hii mikono and she placed her son in the river akaweka mtoto wake kwenye bahari and the son found safety na yule mwanawe akapata salama the children of god wana wa mungu we can find safety tunaweza pata salama even in the hardest of places hata mahali pa baya zaidi the first thing we must do we have to trust in god lazima tumtumainie huyu mungu in the text that we read na maandiko tuliyosoma god is not only giving us safety mungu hatupitu salama he is not only giving us eternal life tupitu uzima wa milele that we shall never perish kama hatutaipotea but he is also promising lakini pia anaahidi that no man kama hamna mtu yeyote hapa duniani above the other hata juu ya dunia below the other chini ya dunia will be able atakayeweza to pluck you out of his hand kukungoa mikononi mwake no power hakuna nguvu no prosperity hakuna mamlaka no wickedness hakuna uovu that has the ability na uwezo to pluck you from his loving hands kukungoa mikononi yake upende there is the prince of his world hata ni mfalme wa hii dunia who may try to do all that he can ambaye anaweza jaribu kufanya yote aweza to pluck you from the hand of god kukungoa mikononi mwa mungu Satan will not stop at anything. Satan hata simamisha hata simamia yote. He will try to steal from you. Atajaribu kukuibia. He try to kill you. Atajaribu kukuua. He will try to destroy you. Atajaribu kukuangamiza. If he can use your mama, kiwa anaweza tumia mama yake. That is who he is going to use. Atatumia huyo. If he can use your girl or boyfriend, atatumia baba yako ama kijana yako. That is who he is going to use. Atatumia hiyo. If he can use the small child in your life, kiwa tumia mtoto wako mdogo maisha to destroy you kukuangamiza that is what he will use atatumia hicho kitoto he can even use you is be your business hata naweza tumia biashara yako to bring trouble in your life kuleta shida maisha yako the bible says biblia inasema that is like a rolling lion kama ni kama simba ngurumae that is seeking whom he can devour atafuta wa kunarua but i heard the lord say nisikia bwana akisema that it is only him bwana ni yeye tu who can open a Naweza kufungua mlango. No one can be able to shut it. Kunaweza kufunga. I had the Lord say. Nisikia Bwana akisema, but as long as you are in his hands. Kama mnaditumi mikononi mwake, he can pluck you out of it. Unachoweza kukungoa mikononi hiyo. But what brothers and sisters? Kwa hiyo unachosema ndugu na dada. The enemy may try to do. Adui anaweza je kukufanya? Pluck you out of the hands of God. Kwa mikononi mwa Mungu. Fear not. Usiogope. Fret not. Usitahayarishe. Just place your trust and thank you for the you know there are times in your life you are zipo nyakati maisha ni mwako do not know whether you are going or you are ambapo hujui kama unakwenda ama unarudi but god kept you lakini mungu amekuhifadhi sometimes the pain in your body wakati mwingine uchungu ndani ya mwili wako may want that you made you to say that you cast god and die huenda ukakufa pengine ulikufanya uone sasa fadhali kufa but god kept you lakini mungu alikuhifadhi frustrations in the last one year ni fadhali kwa ya mwaka uliopita made you wala may may have wanted to make you mad huenda pengine ulikufanya utupe bao but god kept you lakini mungu akakuhifadhi brothers and sisters ndugu na dada i repeat ninarudia tena our god mungu wetu is a keeper ni mpunzi keeps on keeping us anazidi kututunza and he never tires us na yeye hachoki the lord sent me to tell you today nothing kama hamna chochote
Jesus shall separate you from his love. Nothing shall black you from his hand. The hand that made you. Death will not black you. Angels will not black you. Principalities will not black you. The powers of this world will not. The situation that you are facing right now. They do not have power. To black you from the love of God. The Lord instructed me to tell you. That you are more than a conqueror. Through him because he loves you. But there is a rider here. You must trust in him. There is a rider here brethren. You must make up your mind. No matter what. You are trusted. As in the name of the Lord our God. When it comes to salvation, brethren, there is no other place that I would rather be than resting in the loving arms of Jesus. Brethren, what other hands do you know that can scoop the oceans out of their places? What other hands do you know that can take a nothing and out of nothing create everything? What other hands do you know that can heal only with one touch? What other hands do you know that can endure the nail and still forgive what other hands do you know that can be buried in mortality and raised in immortality you know any other hands that can save to the uttermost do you know any other hands that can solve every problem that the world system may bring you away. Do you know in the other hand that can carry every burden that you can take to my brothers and sisters? I know a man from Galilee that want to encourage you that you can place your trust in him. You can hope in him. In him there is security. In him there is safety. In him there is salvation. In him there is healing. In him there is restoration. In him there is restitution. In him there is power. You can't place your trust in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How do you stand Unasimama vipi with him na yeye when it comes to, to security ifiki hapo ni mambo na usalama i want to encourage you this morning nataka nikutie moyo asubuhi ya leo follow where the lord leads fuata anakokuelekeza huyu bwana in the 17th chapter of the gospel of john katika sura ya 17 ya injili ya yohana when jesus prayed yesu alipoomba he said alisema hivi Father, Baba, none that you gave me, I lost. For he will never lead you astray. Brethren, follow Jesus. When it comes to safety, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not in your own understanding. Acknowledge him. 
in all your ways and he will direct your path when it comes to salvation Bible says if you confess the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved my brothers and sisters you can trust our God who is certain even in these uncertain you can trust our God who is so certain even in these uncertain times may the Lord strengthen these words in your heart and may the strength of our God sustain you may the power of our God preserve you may the unfailing hands of our God protect you May the will of God direct you. May the love of God go with you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And may the Lord God of peace give you peace. Forever. Amen and amen. Amen.